Well, good morning, everyone. It's a pleasure to welcome you to our service. My name is Nick Cornell. I'm the rector here at Christchurch Southborough. A very warm welcome to you. What a special day it is. It is Pentecost. It is the day we celebrate the gift of the Holy Spirit. God has made himself known to us. He lives in our hearts by faith. He wants to help us. He gives us power through the gift of the Holy Spirit. We're going to be thinking about that day the Holy Spirit was given. As Jim Stevens uh, speaks to us this morning, we're going to be thinking about uh, different people in the life of our church and our community, and we're going to be singing and praying together. Let's commit our time to God using uh, a time of prayer as we begin. Father God, we thank you for this morning. We thank you that you are with us now through the gift of your Holy Spirit. May he help us to know your presence with us. And may we grow closer to you through this time together. Amen. We're going to sing. Our first song is Breathe on Me, Breath of God, a prayer for the gift of the Holy Spirit every day, moment by moment. Uh, do sing out loud. Uh, wake the neighbours if, uh, if you need to. Uh, but also, uh, if you'd rather just sit back and listen to the words, that's great too. Let's sing. Come before God now in a time of confession. We say together, Lord God, we have sinned against you. We have done evil in your sight. We are sorry and repent. Have mercy on us according to your love. Wash away our wrongdoing and cleanse us from our sin. Renew a right spirit within us and restore us to the joy of your salvation through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And so may the Father of all mercies cleanse us from our sins and restore us in his image to the praise and glory of his name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. This morning we're thinking about Pentecost and we are going to hear a sung version of the story of Pentecost that comes from a new rhyming Bible. It's uh, an album and you can find it on iTunes and Amazon and all the other places. You might find CDs. I'll put a link in the notes to the video. But uh, do enjoy this uh, all-age version of the story of Pentecost uh, that comes from this new Bob Hartman rhyming Bible CD. Tongues of flame and 
in the spirit king Blowing wind and tongues of flame And everything was changed Gathered in an upstairs room Where Jesus friends together But when the wind began to blow It wasn't just the weather God's Holy Spirit Without an education It was the feast of Pentecost So Jews from every land Were gathered in Jerusalem They didn't understand God's Holy Spirit filled that place Appeared on each disciple's head Somehow they can speak To each of us in our own tongues In Latin, French and Greek And one man not so courteous said This is what I think And probably they make no sense They've had too much to drink So Peter stood and told the crowd These men are sober friends God promised this It's coming from the spirit that he sends The prophet Joel told us When one day we dream dreams Men and women, old and young That day has come It seems For God's own spirit falls on all have our reading now and uh, Pauline is going to read to us the Bible readings on the screen if you're looking that up uh, and Jim is going to come in straight after Pauline has read to us and uh, share God's word with us. Reading today is from Acts chapter 2 verses 1 to 21. When the day of Pentecost came they were all together in one place Suddenly, a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Now they were staying in Jerusalem. God-fearing Jews from every nation under heaven. When they heard this sound, a crowd came together in bewilderment because each one heard them speaking in his own language. Utterly amazed, they asked, are not all these men who are speaking Galileans? Then how is it that each of us hears them 
in his own native language. Parthians, Medes and Elamites, residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and parts of Libya near Cyrene, visitors from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs. We hear them declaring the wonders of God in our own tongues. Amazed and perplexed, they ask one another, what does this mean? Some, however, made fun of them and said they've had too much wine. Then Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed the crowd. Fellow Jews and all of you who live in Jerusalem, let me explain this to you. Listen carefully to what I say. These men are not drunk, as you suppose. It's only nine in the morning. No, this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days and they will prophesy. I will show wonders in the heaven above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and billows of smoke. The sun will be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the great and glorious day of the Lord. And everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Thanks be to God. Good morning to you all. What an extraordinary day that really was. All present that morning suddenly heard a sound like the blowing of a violent wind which filled the whole house, but the air didn't move. Then what looked like a great mass of flames appeared above them, which separated out and came to rest on each one of them. No one missed out. No burnt hair or skirt scorched head coverings. Feel the awesomeness of this. Then they began to speak in a great variety of languages, alien to them, declaring the wonders of God. And this went on for a considerable time, sufficient for a large crowd of God-fearing Jews who are gathering from every nation for the Feast of Pentecost. They were amazed and perplexed as each heard the wonderful words of God in the language used back home. Wind and fire are often symbolic in the Old Testament of the presence of God who speaks. All three things present that morning. Who was there that morning? gathered together. In the opening chapter of Acts, Luke, who wrote that book, tells us that the company of believers was about 120. The 12 apostles, the women who'd been with Jesus, other men and women who had a love for him and their children. Why had they gathered? Luke tells us that after his resurrection, Jesus spent time with the apostles, teaching them about the kingdom of God, and that very shortly they would be baptized with the Holy Spirit, plunged into, immersed in the Holy Spirit. And they were to wait in Jerusalem for this gift of God the Father. They would receive power when the Holy Spirit came upon them to be Christ's witnesses in Jerusalem and from there throughout the whole world. 
part of that teaching Jesus gave them must have been that this gift was not just for them, the apostles, but for every disciple of Jesus, without exception. So the festival day of Pentecost, a non-working day, was an ideal opportunity to be passing on to those who loved Jesus, his teaching about the kingdom of God, and the promised gift of the Holy Spirit. And then suddenly, spectacularly, the Holy Spirit came, wind, fire, speech, to all the believers in Jesus, not just the apostles, but the women, men, and children present. He came in such a way they could never forget. In his Gospel, John recalls these words of Jesus. I will ask the Father, and he will give you another counsellor, the Spirit of Truth, to be with you forever. That promise now fulfilled that morning. This was no here today, gone tomorrow gift. The Holy Spirit given would never leave them. He would be with them forever. He is another counsellor. The word another signifies one just like Jesus. One just like Jesus to be with them, with each believer, for all time, wherever they were. Let us remember that the Holy Spirit is a person, not an it or a force. Jesus always talks about him as he. We find this a bit difficult to grasp. Easily we accept God the Father, Christ Jesus the Son, as personal. For Father and Son are words which we easily identify with. But we don't have a clear image or picture of Holy Spirit. But he is a person, not just a force or power. He is the person of the triune God, yes, with power, but one who handles power with perfect love and wisdom. Furthermore, he is the one who sustained, equipped, empowered the man Jesus for his amazing, wonderful ministry. God's perfect plan is to give him to every believer forever to give him the Holy Spirit to us. Amazing. of the Lord, the Holy One is here. Come bow before Him now with reverence and fear. In Him no sin is found. We stand of the Lord, the Holy One is here. Be still for the glory of the Lord is shining all around. He burns with holy fire, with
we've been thinking about today? Should we have an experience like those in today's reading? It's certainly not a blueprint for all time. The Acts of the Apostles records a number of occasions when the Holy Spirit came on new believers. The signs accompanying his coming vary enormously. God delights in such variety. The important thing is that all they had a very real experience of his coming. They really knew, without a doubt, that the Holy Spirit was now with them and in them. That is the truth we need to embrace. When someone gives us a gift, we know we've got it. We see it, we handle it, we use it. When God gives us the gift of the Holy Spirit, we cannot see him or touch him. So God gives us special experiences so that we know that he is with us, in us, and he will help us in our Christian journey. I believe there are many people today who have a real faith in Jesus, but who know very little of the Holy Spirit. Mainly, I think, because they've never been taught about him. My early Christian experience was just like that. I realised Christ died for me, I asked for his forgiveness, invited him to be Lord of my life, joined the church, and all that is good and true, but there was no mention of the Holy Spirit. Looking back, it was a bit like being given a lovely car but no fuel to run it. If this rings bells with you, today is a great day to specifically ask God to give you his Holy Spirit, something he has promised he will do, and that you may have real experience of his coming so that you know he is with you and in you. Please have the courage to ask Nick or myself or someone who you really trust in Christ to pray such a prayer with you, for you. That is good New Testament practice. The focus should be on asking God to give you the Spirit, not to worry about what experience may accompany that. How the Holy Spirit meets you is God's prerogative. He wants you to know his gift is given to you. Once we have real assurance and experience of the Holy Spirit having come to us, we are invited to trust that he will always be with us and to look to him for wisdom and courage as we face all the issues of day-to-day -day living, not expecting to have wonderful experience all the time, though sometimes he does 
surprise us. Having come to us, what are the Holy Spirit's priorities for us? Well, I'd like to mention three. Firstly, to make God real to me, so that I can know, rest and rejoice in his unconditional committed love for me, that I am special to him, and to help me to grow into the character of Jesus. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. This is the fruit of the Holy Spirit dwelling in us. It is what we see in fullness in the man Jesus. The Spirit builds this character in us as we learn to cooperate with him. Second, he builds us together in a community where the love, the presence and the character of Christ is at the very heart of our forgiveness. So we are mutually enriched and encouraged and God is glorified as others seeing this are made to question their relationship with him. Third, the Holy Spirit calls and equips us to do new things, which of ourselves we would consider impossible. Yes, he takes us out of our comfort zones. But the Holy Spirit never calls us to do something without equipping us to do whatever it is he asks of us. But we only discover his power to help as we step out to obey. We are in partnership with him. His ability together with my availability. And it's as we walk out with him, we discover more and more of the amazing grace and power of wonder of God, which we never discover if we say, no, sorry, can't do. He equips us for service, both within the church family and in the life of the world. He gifts us all in different ways to serve him according to his good and gracious purposes. Such living is often challenging, but ultimately very rewarding. We are called to trust that the Holy Spirit is with us, even though we don't feel him actually quite a lot of the time. But knowing that, there are times when God specially touches us, just to reinforce in our minds, yes, he does still love us. Yes, he is still with us. Yes, he will never leave us. Very briefly, I would like to share with you three occasions on which God really touched and blessed me in very different ways. As a young man, I was on a holiday with a friend on the Isle of Skye, and we stopped for a picnic lunch. And full of youthful vigour, I ran up the hill to look at the sea. On the top of the hill, there was a ridge. I'll just jump over it. But at that moment, these words came to my mind. Not a good idea, Jim. So at the very last moment, I decided I would just jump onto the top to discover myself standing on the edge of a 300 foot cliff. Thank you, Lord, for your amazing love and care for me. Secondly, I remember one Sunday evening in church, I became increasingly aware of what I can only describe as dirtiness inside me. And I began 
to sob. A friend seeing this took me out to a small room in another part of the church where I continued to sob bitterly. For as it turned out, at least half an hour. When I eventually stopped, I had this wonderful sense of being clean inside. Praise you, Lord, for your love for me. My last picture is when I was invited to preach at my old school, Oakham, on Sunday morning. Some 300 teenagers, who most of them probably didn't want to be there. I know what public school Sunday worship is about. Well, I prepared well, but as I came to the occasion, I was scared. As I got up to go to the pulpit, I asked very definitely for the help of the Holy Spirit. Immediately, I tingled from head to toe for about 10 seconds. Thank you, Lord. I relaxed. The Lord was with me. I preached. People listened. Job done. We've covered a lot this morning. May I invite you sometime today to sit somewhere quiet and to ask the Holy Spirit to come to you, to minister to you. Give him time. He may come quickly, or not till Tuesday evening, or even Thursday morning. He knows how best to answer that prayer. And it is something he will answer because God wants us to know that his Holy Spirit is in us. Ask that he would come to refresh, encourage, fill you, that you may be more fully a child of God. That is what Pentecost is all about. Jim, thank you uh, for what you've shared with us this morning. Len is going to help us in a time of prayer now. Be still, our troubled hearts, as we come before God our set. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come before you this morning with hearts troubled in many ways. But as we come before you, Lord, we pray that peace would reign in our hearts. That we would know you through your Son, Jesus Christ, who gave of himself and gave the promise to his disciples of a comforter, an advocate, the Holy Spirit. And it's on this Pentecost Sunday that we celebrate the gift of this Holy Spirit. What? A friend we have in Jesus, all our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. Oh, what peace we often forfeit. Oh, what needless pain we bear, all because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. Heavenly Father, this morning we come before you to thank you for the world you set us in, to thank you for your church, to thank you for your ministers, to thank you for the grace, mercy and peace you have shown us through your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. And as we come before you with troubled hearts and perhaps troubled minds, Lord, we ask that your peace would reign. We give you thanks for the church we give you thanks for her ministers. We give you thanks especially for Nick, Gillian, Aidan and Theo. We ask, Lord, that you would continue to bless Nick as he opens your word to us. That he guides us, challenges us and encourages us. We give you thanks for Sheila and Jim as they too open your word to us. We give you thanks for the fellowship we have within this family of the church.
Christchurch here in Southampton, celebrating 150 years of being. And we pray, Lord, that this fellowship would grow through this media of YouTube and through the church being opened again soon. Give thanks for our families and friends. And we give thanks for those of the community who have given of their time selflessly. Give you thanks for nurses and doctors and teachers, police, fire, ambulance, all people in the services and those who give of their time to bring comfort to us. We thank you, Lord, for those who work in uh, supermarkets, for those who work out in the roads and the streets, for the bin men, for all who give their time to make our lives that little easier. Heavenly Father, we'd ask that you give wisdom to all in authority, especially at this time, and that they would be honest with us. We pray, Lord, that no one would mislead us, although we have been warned. Last week, or a week or so ago, we heard from Abby and Sam in Uganda and the trials and tribulations that they are going through. And we think of the rest of the world, Lord, also hit by this coronavirus. We pray for sensibility, Lord, that people would understand the needs. The needs of others and they would put those needs before themselves. Have we trials and temptations? Is there trouble anywhere? We should never be discouraged if we take it to the Lord in prayer. Can we find a friend so faithful who will all our sorrows share? Jesus knows our every weakness. Take it to the Lord in prayer. There are those of our fellowship, Lord, who are struggling in body, mind and spirit. And we pray especially for Paul and Diane every this time. Personally, we may know individuals who need your presence, Lord, and we lift them to you now. Give comfort and peace to all who are struggling in body, mind and spirit. And help us, Lord, to meet them where they are. To encourage them to look to you and to rest in you. Are we weak and heavy laden, cumbered with a load of care? Jesus only is our refuge. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Do our friends despise, forsake us? Take it to the Lord in prayer. In his arms he will enfold us. We shall find a solace there. So this Pentecost Sunday, Lord, we come before you, seeking your mercy and grace. We ask, Heavenly Father, that we may rest in your loving arms. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. We're going to say the Lord's Prayer together. So, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen.
We're going to have a time uh, catching up with uh, a member, not of our church community as such, but uh, our wider community, someone we support through the work of our missions committee, who uh, gives some of our income to support local mission and international uh, work. And we're thinking locally today as we catch up with Catherine from Crossteach. Well, Sue does anyway, as uh, uh, Sue spoke with Catherine a couple of weeks ago to hear about life uh, during this time of lockdown. And uh, we hear a little bit about what uh, Catherine and the rest of the Crossteach team are doing. Uh, if you don't know, Crossteach is a, a national uh, group which uh, looks after schools. They go into schools, they do after school clubs and collective worship, that sort of thing. And uh, we have links with the Tunbridge Wells team. Morning everybody, it's lovely to uh, be with you and today we are meeting up with Catherine from Cross Teach. Hi Catherine. Hi. Um, hopefully some of you will recognise her. Um, obviously she's a great friend of mine because we uh, camped together in the summer. Uh, but Catherine works for Cross Teach and obviously going into um, schools which are not open at the moment. How's that really affected what you've been able to do uh, whilst uh, we've been in lockdown? Yeah, obviously. So that's our, our main um, reason for being is to go in and teach about the Christian faith in schools. And so that's really put the, <laughs> put the kibosh on that one. Um, uh, so most of our staff are currently on furlough. Um, we're really thankful to God for this um, furlough scheme that the government are, um, are offering, um, which means that uh, we are on furlough and not working currently but up until the end of March beginning of April we were able to produce a lot of um, materials for schools that we were aiming to go into uh, we had a lot of lessons planned in and Easter experiences for those who know what those are sort of a one-hour session um, looking at the Easter story so we were able to produce a lot of material up until that point so we're really thankful for that um, and they've been really well received in terms of the schools that we've had contact with. Um, and so uh, we were able to do a bit of work, but yeah, not, not doing a lot of work at the moment. Um, and just trusting really that uh, whenever the schools reopen, we're able to go back in and continue um, as we were. Yeah, so how, how are you planning going forward on that one then? Uh, it's quite, it's a quite a hard thing to know kind of what we're doing and um, Wayne and the trustees are looking at um, how we can keep going as we uh, have done. Um, in terms of uh, sort of working in the way forward, we're consulting with uh, churches and local supporters and schools in terms of what, what that will look like going forward. Um, so just really they're sort of doing a lot of work on that um it's slightly unclear at the moment in terms of what that will look like obviously i think schools don't really know what that will look like at the moment um but we trust that god is in control and uh, has a good plan so how can we best support you at the moment and mm. the future? great uh i think the majority would be brilliant if you yeah, could pray just pray for wisdom for Wayne and the trustees um, as they're uh, liaising with different people and uh, thinking and praying about uh, how it's wise to continue. Um, pray for the staff on furlough. Um, I think most of us are enjoying it quite a lot, um, but I think um, sort of looking ahead, um, we'd love to be continuing in our work. Um, so pray for patience and joy. Um, and uh, good growth I suppose as we carry on and also pray for the young people I think um, a lot of uh, our weeks were sort of meeting up with young folk in Christian unions and clubs at school and um, doing assemblies so there's hundreds of children that we've been working with um, but we've not been able to share uh, the good news of Jesus with so far so pray for them pray that God would be working in them and through them and in their situations that Christians would be really encouraged where they are and um, part of the churches um, and they might be able to share the good news with their friends too um, so pray please that would be amazing thank you thank you so much uh, so let's remember uh, Catherine and for Carissa and Sophie Ann based in Tommage Wells uh, they're our local team and uh, let's remember those in prayer this week thanks Catherine and take care thanks so much bye
Some notices for this morning. Last week we launched our online giving page. It's a way in this time of lockdown where it's more difficult to uh, get money through uh, the collection at church or through envelopes. It's a way for you to give online. It's uh, the, the system that's been recommended by the Church of England. They're subsidising the setup costs for churches. Thanks to everyone who gave it a try last week. Uh, I've used it as well. It's, it's very straightforward. Uh, there's a web address on the screen or a code that you scan with your smartphone and uh, it'll direct you to our giving page. Uh, very simple, very easy. You put in your direct debit, uh, your, not your direct debit, your uh, debit card or your credit card. Uh, you click a couple of boxes and that's it. You're done. And uh, if you would like to claim gift aid, which can I recommend you do if you're a taxpayer, it, you, just an extra box, uh, an address, it takes you a couple of seconds more, but it does increase your donation to the church by uh, 25%. So please do that if you can. Uh, if uh, if not, if you missed all of that, uh, if you dig into the description uh, below the video on YouTube, uh, all the links you'll need are there. And as every week. On those links are uh, various things uh, that you might find useful or interesting and while you're there if you've not subscribed to our channel just click subscribe uh, if uh, if you're logged into YouTube that means you'll see all our videos uh, when you log in um, let's just pray shall we giving thanks to God for the gifts that we receive as a church Father God we've been thinking this morning about the gift of the Holy Spirit we praise and thank you for your generosity Father, as we give to you in, in, in time and money and energy, uh, we pray that those gifts uh, would be used for your glory. We know that all things come from you and of your own do we give you. Amen. I can also just say a huge thank you to everyone who gives by standing order. Uh, that is really helpful and has been uh, uh, so important as we uh, experience a time of, of, of difference in terms of meeting as church. Thank you. Well, uh, we're going to meet again for church coffee after the service on Zoom. I look forward to seeing you there. We're going to uh, close our service in just a moment with a prayer of blessing. But uh, we're going to sing after the prayer of blessing just a word on our song. Uh, Sue has recorded a version of Holy Overshadowing. We've missed our church musicians. It's great to have Sue uh, singing for us this morning. Thank you. And uh, we look forward to more. Uh, but before we uh, sing, let's pray our final prayer of blessing. May the Spirit who set the church on fire upon the day of Pentecost bring the world alive with the love of the risen Christ. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with us today, this Pentecost and forever. Amen. <laughs> Spread your wings of mercy over me And guard my heart with true humility No shadow of the darkness pressing in Only the holy overshadowing Underneath your wings overshadowing Refuge will I seek, but God alone. No hiding place save only at your throne. Only the cross, the blood to wash my sin. Only the holy overshadowing underneath your wings, overshadowing. You are my shield and my glory. You are the lifter of my head. And though the storms may rage around me, I'll be safe within, beneath the holy overshadow. No burden on my back too hard to bear. Only the 
easy, Lord, you bid me wear Until these troubles pass, my soul will sway Praise to the holy overshadowing Underneath your wings, overshadowing You are my shield and my glory Overshadowing, overshadowing.